Hey there, Chill. This is Arik Ray from the backwoods of Phoenix City, Alabama. My question to you is, what makes a star? And I'm not talking about the Conor McGregor's. I'm not talking about the Nate Diaz or Jorge Mazda or even Israel Adesanya. Because it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that they're a star. But what I'm talking about, the guys like Bryce Mitchell, the guys like Mike Perry, the guys like Macy Barber, the guys like Sherry Shane O'Malley, and the guys like Kevin Lee. What makes them a star and what makes them stand out from the crowd? And my other question to you is... If a regional fighter is coming up and they know they're going to be in the UFC or on Dana White Contender Series in the, seeable, in the foreseeable future, what advice would you give them not only to be a star, but to make money in the business? Thanks. Okay, so let me take it from a little bit different approach, okay? Let me tell you some commonalities that the stars have, and I see what you see. I know what you mean with the Macy Barbers. I get what you mean with the Shane O'Malley. I, I love that you mentioned Bryce Mitchell in there. Bryce Mitchell, for sure, is going to make it in this business, right? Some guys are a maybe. Put Bryce Mitchell into the for sure column and start pushing him now. I like what you said about Mike Perry, but here, here's what I can tell you. There's not exactly a recipe, and when we identify the commonalities, we could then share that with somebody and make sure that this somebody did all of those things, still isn't guaranteed that they'll be a star. It's just a, it's a weird thing. But here's one of the things that they do have in common, okay? Being in people's hearts and minds, having people find you interesting, and having them willing to come along for the journey. Regardless of the outcome, having them buy in and come along for the journey. This is the goal. How do you get there? Well, one thing that they all, all the stars, as you put it, have had in common is they win fights. Now, winning fights isn't the key to being a star. Winning a fight is the key to being guaranteed that you get another fight. And if you win another fight, that's a guarantee that you get another fight and you start to work your way up the car. There's built-in mechanisms for media. There is a built-in mechanism for if you're a co-main event, there's a built-in mechanism of media for if you're a main event. Okay, it's not just when you walk out on the night. There is an actual formula for what happens for some of those placements. So the more fights that you start winning, the higher placements you get, the higher placements you get, and the closer you get to co-main or main event status is the more media you get and the more opportunity that you have to come out there and tell your story. But with some of those names that you mentioned, I mean, Sean O'Malley is not only wildly fun to watch compete and unique and different, and he'll do it on one leg, but then he has something to say. He's got a little bit of a unique look. He's very good with the social media and bringing people in and letting them see parts of his life. I mean, right, that's, that's Sean O'Malley's approach. But for him, that worked. I go back to the other end of it. One of the biggest stars the sport has ever seen is Chuck Liddell. But there was a meaningful amount of, and Chuck was the best in the world. He was the best. Tito had the belt, but Tito could beat Chuck. Tito, or I apologize, Chuck could beat Tito. Tito would even tell people, hey man, you know, Chuck. Chuck's the best in the world. But Chuck couldn't get that opportunity. Tito was on top, and Chuck wasn't like his number two. Chuck was like his number 12. I mean, Chuck just wasn't getting over. And the only reason I share how that fight would have gone and how their workouts went is because it isn't just about who's best. Perception is more valuable business-wise in this business than skills. Your perception is Tito was perceived to be better, and, and Tito at that time was way ahead of Chuck. I mean, these guys weren't like neck and neck. It was Tito, and it was Tito by a lot. So back up and go to Chuck. I mean, this guy was doing everything right in terms of winning fights. This guy had a unique look. He never really had anything too fun to say, and he didn't really let people in on his life, but he had a good reputation. Everyone that met him liked him, but there was a period of time where having a mohawk and skulls on your head was weird. I don't bring that up to tease Chuck. I bring it just the opposite. Now people for Halloween are shaving their heads into mohawk and going out and saying they're Chuck Liddell. There's costumes you could, but to have that look, I mean, it became a very cool thing, but it was one of those deals. But it took Chuck a very long time. It's important to study Chuck's career because it took Chuck a very long time. Then all of a sudden when the Iceman was formed, and some of the looks he did, I mean, he was doing goofy hand gestures, but then people started copying it. People were doing it in the crowd. He was doing this celebration that did, it really consisted of nothing more than yelling while holding your hands. But that became like an iconic image. Like some stuff doesn't work until all of a sudden it works, right? Same went for Conor McGregor, just in a really expedited pace. 
you got this Irish guy showing up wearing bow ties. I mean, Connor was wearing $40 suits that happened to have a bow tie. He looked ridiculous. It was a silly thing. Two fights later, people are showing up wearing bow ties, trying to mimic Connor. I mean, his gimmick caught on and it caught on fast and it became a super cool thing. He didn't really have to live through the, hey, this is weird. Why are you? Like Chuck did. Chuck had to go for that for a while. And I only offer you a couple of stories because there is some commonalities. I love what you're saying about, I love that you included Bryce Mitchell in that, by the way. That's a great call for you. I see that too. Bryce is headed up and he's headed up fast. And he's got the look and he's got the skills, but now he's got this weird angle going with Reebok and camo. Who would have thought that would work? But it did. There is an actual story there. I hope they don't give him his camo shorts. I hope they refuse to give him his camo shorts. I love how mad he is that he can't get camo shorts. I want the story to live on. If all of a sudden Bryce Mitchell walks out, he's wearing camo shirts for me. I'm not going to go, oh, good, Bryce won. I'm going, oh, no, the story's over. Bryce picked a fight with Reebok. It's simple. Over the color of shorts. Simple. But it worked. Hey, Jill, I've got a question about Ryan Hall. Uh, apparently, since he's been in the UFC, he's 4-0. But since his Ultimate Fighter days, he's had a hard time getting a fight. And nobody wants to fight him, apparently. Um, says ranked guys and tough guys don't want to fight him. They turn down his fights when they're offered to him. He called out Frankie Edgar, Jose Aldo, hoping one of those guys wouldn't turn it down if he called him out. Um, somebody in his position, why not just give him a title shot? And if he wins the title, then nobody that wants a title can turn down a fight with him anymore. What do you think about somebody in his position like that? Well, uh, No, no, that most certainly isn't how it works. Listen. Ryan Hall has some very good skills, but guys aren't turning them down because of his skills. They're turning them down because, you know, when you're mentioning a Frankie Edgar or Jose, did you say Jose Aldo? Whoever it was that you mentioned in there, but some of these big name guys, big name guys have the right to take on other big name guys. Frankie Edgar doesn't give a damn. I can tell you right now, Frankie Edgar does not give a damn what your skills are. He's not afraid that he's going to get stretched out by Ryan Hall. And maybe he would get stretched out by Ryan Hall. But if Frankie Edgar's going to go out, there and win himself or lose himself, he's going to do it to a big name guy. So for Ryan Hall or anybody else to go out there and call a fight that you can't get, that you're not in a position to get, and then go, well, they don't want to fight me, and then equate that to your skill set, you're wrong. And every fighter, and I'm as guilty as I'm pointing the finger at Ryan Hall right now. The reason I can recognize it, Ryan Hall, I, I did it myself, but you have a position, yeah, and then you got to fight with other guys that are within that position. You're constantly trying to climb into a new position. Ryan is doing nothing wrong, and this isn't meant to be critical of Ryan. But it is false that guys are turning him down because they're scared of him. They're turning him down because he's taking shots that are way out of his lane, way out of his lane. And if Ryan Hall wants to go and get those fights, he needs to make himself interesting. That's the reality. Frankie Edgar's interesting. I could go into all of the reasons that he's interesting. But he's there, and he's interesting, and he's compelling, and he's a main event fighter. That's just a reality. Ryan Hall is none of those things. So if he thinks that Frankie or somebody else is turning, he's calling for fights that he does not deserve to get. The first thing that Ryan Hall needs to do is not to go work on his game. He's a very skilled fighter. He needs to go work on his interest. Hey, hey, Uncle Chill. My name is Sean from the great Show Me State, and I have a problem, my friend. And the problem I'm having is buying in to this narrative that Connor is going to have no difficulty walking through Cowboy. I keep hearing he's too fast, he's too strong, that left hand is going to be too problematic, and I'm having issues with that narrative for a few reasons. One being is that Connor had surgery on that left hand not too long ago. We've seen fighters get procedures done due to injuries sustained in training or from fights, and we've seen that affect their ability to perform in the future. The second issue I have with this narrative is that Connor's only fought at welterweight twice, both against Nate Diaz, where he lost one due to submission, and the win was considered to be controversial depending on who you ask. Whereas Cowboy has gotten multiple finishes and multiple weight divisions in multiple ways, and his losses at welterweight were against some true contenders. When you look at Edwards, Masvidal, Darren Till, Robbie Lawler, all of them have shown to be really formidable opponents. I just don't know if that left hand is going to be as effective as we've seen in the past, like when Connor fought at featherweight. And I just don't know if I have enough of a sample size of Connor at welterweight to even know if he's a true contender there. What are your thoughts? You just said, I don't know if I haven't, you just said sample size. Can I have that? Can I use that moving forward? I like that. I like what you said there. Now, 
let's back up to something else you said, because if this is accurate information, I should have been making videos on this. You said Conor McGregor had surgery on his left hand. Is that true? Can you verify that for me? Serious question, not challenging you. Conor McGregor had surgery on his left hand. If that is in fact true, please give me all of the details. How did he hurt his hand? When? What was this surgery? What was the recovery? To Tell me anything you know about that, because this is the first that I've heard, and I would be very interested to know. How and when did Conor McGregor hurt his left hand that he had to go into surgery? So let, let, set that aside. If you've got scoop on that, fill me in on that. But let's move on to the second part. Yeah, I'm not so sure about this whole Connor coming in and running over Cowboy business either. I haven't really seen anybody run over Cowboy. In fact, there was one fight in Cowboy's entire career where it was pretty, he, he did kind of get ran over. He And that was Nate Diaz, but that was a surprise. Nate came out and surprised him early, and it was this snowball where Nate just would not stop. It was one of those nights where I felt as though Cowboy and his skills never really came head to head. Like, Cowboy was out there, but his skills weren't quite because Nate took it away real fast. It was kind of one of those weird... Every other fight I've seen Cowboy in, and particularly as of late, he's been very competitive. I mean, to make believe that Al Iaquinta couldn't give Conor McGregor huge problems... I mean, come on. Yes, he could. Al gave Khabib his hardest fight ever, and that's according to Khabib. Al Iaquinta is very meaningful within that division. Cowboy didn't have all that hard of a time. I'm trying to think how many rounds Cowboy won against Al, but I think he won all five. That's a pretty good Cowboy. You're telling me that Tony Ferguson couldn't give Conor McGregor problems? You're telling me that you're, you... Cowboy gave Tony some big trouble. And I understand how that fight went and Tony gave him trouble right back, but for about eight or nine minutes of that 10-minute contest, I mean, that was a real... That was a real back and forth. As a matter of fact, the one round that had... Con come to complete completion was the first round. It was arguable if Cowboy won that round. I understand what the judges said. I agree with the judges that Tony won it. But I'm just saying it was it was arguable. It was a close round. It was a competitive round. Can we can we all agree on that? So uh yeah I'm not sure what this whole cowboy getting ran over business is is all about. I also understand the night where Cowboy fought Till, but that kind of came back to the surprise factor too. And that was a gunslinging match, and, and I don't think that Cowboy knew that Till possessed some of those skills. He knows exactly what Connor possesses. And I do wonder about that left hand. I, I had a meaningful conversation with Eddie Alvarez after Eddie fought Connor. Eddie had no problem with the outcome. He was a sportsman, but Eddie was very upset with himself for one reason, which is he told himself, here's what I'm going to do. But when they got in there and said go, he did something different. And that, as a competitor, it drove Eddie crazy. He was so disappointed in himself and angry at himself for doing that. Why I bring that up is if Cowboy goes in with a complete understanding and respect of that left hand that we're all making so damn much about, but rightfully so, but doesn't worry about anything else. And see, that's the art of Conor McGregor. Everyone knows Conor has a left hand. Conor knows you know. So Connor spends 10% of the time throwing the left hand and 90% of the time distracting you from the left hand. 90% of the time, Connor is making you think about something else, kicking you in the leg, kicking you in the stomach, jabbing you to the head, saying things to you, making faces, taunting, he's doing all sorts of things. So he can come in with that left. If Cowboy can stay focused, take the jab, take the hook, take throw his own stuff, every, and, but watch that left hand. Completely watch, know all about it. For the most part, he takes it away. Hey, Joe. It's Garrett from Melbourne, Florida. So I have a question in regards to John Jones and the light heavyweight division. So obviously he's beat everyone he could beat, but I think he has one more fight if he can get past Dominic Reyes. But in order for him to get that, the fight to make would be Corey Anderson versus Anthony Smith. Because a lot of people have slept on Corey Anderson, and yes, he hasn't put on the best show in every single fight, but he's getting very consistent. And I think if he can beat Anthony Smith, then that would be John Jones' last title fight before he moves on to the heavyweight division. What are your thoughts? I, I agree with half of what you're saying. The other half of this is we're not all being fair to John Jones trying to insist that he leave the division. Okay, that is his division, and he happens to, to weigh 
the right weight to go down to 205. I mean, he just happens to be a light heavyweight. I fully agree that John could leave. I get all of these. Are Somebody has to anchor down 205. 205 is a perennial division. So bumping John up as his experiment or to have fun or let John go and become the world champion and do all these great things at heavyweight. Who's that help? I mean, who really gets helped by that? And then the next guy that comes in at 205 pounds is going to have a little bit of this same stigma as the guys that did come in behind John or while John was sitting, you know, sitting in the corner with a dunce cap on, which is the same stigma of, yeah, you're only the champion because John isn't here. John comes, when dad comes home, uh, right, the kids will go back in order. It's one of these things. And I just don't see the benefit of trying to talk. I'm talking about from a promotional standpoint. If I'm in a leadership position, I don't see the benefit in moving John Jones up. I just don't. You're going to leave that spot open and nobody's going to be able to fill that void because you're always going to have the chatter of John. And then you move John up, you, you, you're taking heavyweights out now, which is, I, I just don't fully get it myself. I think that the thing that needs to happen at 205 pounds is somebody needs to step up that's interesting. And I think we were close to getting that. I think Jacques Array was very interesting. I think Luke Rockholt was interesting. I think Weidman was very interesting. I mean, we were right on the cusp of getting that. Corey Anderson has now all of a sudden found a way to make himself interesting. Johnny Walker is of interest. He needs to come back. Lionheart has been out with his damn hand thing for a little bit, but he's almost back. And, you know, I think it's just one of those things. You know, I think that Jan is starting to become interesting, but it's a little bit of a slow rise. I think that that division is very stacked. It is very hard. It is very competitive, but somebody of interest, the one thing it lacks is interest. John has it. John's got interest, but John isn't good at sharing. And John isn't smart enough to know how to pull somebody else out. He just, he doesn't know how to do these things. So John's just going to go be John. Okay, great. Everybody else is going to have to figure it out on their own, which is okay. But I don't think the answer is John's cleaned out this division. Let's move him on. John cleaned out the old division. There's a lot of fresh blood in here. And this fresh blood deserves an opportunity.